Hey everybody, Andy Nelson. So uh, aesthetically, what did you think of that artwork I just showed you? Not sure you want to see, you want to see it again? Okay, let's take a look at it. Ready? All right. Did you catch some elements? Did you get? Did you absorb that? Want to see it one more time? Okay. Okay. Now I'm sure some of you picked up on what I was doing. What I was doing was showing you two different pieces of artwork, okay? Two different pieces of artwork, and curiously enough, this is a, something I dealt with years ago, uh, where this piece of artwork here was a graphic on a t-shirt, and this graphic appeared on a, not a competitor's, but you know, another producer's t-shirt some months later. And we have a little bit of dispute about whether there was copyright infringement, okay? copyright infringement in this case. So what is copyright infringement? Now copyright infringement does come down to a largely singular question and that is, is there a substantial similarity between uh, expressive work A and expressive work B? Um, and inherent in that is the fact that B must have had some access and ability to copy A because copyright does not prohibit two independent creations um, that emerge and just happen to be very, very, very similar or substantially similar. That will not be a copyright infringement, one of the other. There has to be actual copying since copyright itself gives uh, the authors of expressive works the right to control copies of their works, okay? So copyright infringement, substantial similarity. But thing is, what does copyright cover? Let's look at that. It covers, graphic art, it covers fine art, it covers music, as in musical notation, lyric writing, the recording of the music is covered by copyright, it covers photography, uh, it covers architectural works, uh, literary works, of course, that are written work, whether it's poems or a poem, poetry, uh, you know, lengthier, um, you know, literature, um, uh, even kind of technical works, not necessarily just novels, fictional novels, but other things. So expressive works, those are the things that are covered by copyright. When say is something substantially similar to another, you gotta think about that differently. And there is plenty of law that's developed uh, over the decades, um, or should I say scores, <laughs> maybe uh, centuries, um, that has answered that question and helped refine that question, substantial similarity, depending on the type of work. Now, if you look at something like this, you know, what is it? Is it the fact that, you know, overall from a distance they look very similar? Do you get into the nitty gritty and look, if you actually look closely, there are tons of differences, but are they substantially similar for purposes of assessing copyright infringement? That is a complicated question. But ultimately think about this. If, uh, you know, if you have a work that is protected by copyright, and again, it could be something visual, but it may be something audible, uh, in the in the uh, in the sense of sound recording um, or other music, what have you, uh, substantial similarity. Okay, maybe maybe so. Maybe you're onto something. That is, maybe there is copyright infringement. Infringement. There's much more to ask. You can't simply say that is like that, and therefore it is copyright infringement, unless it's an actual absolute duplicate facsimile of course, and you know that you're the first creator and somebody came after and they just duplicated it. And that's what happens all the time, of course, don't get me wrong. But if it's something a little more not so apparent, uh, there's something more to ask. And what you don't want to do uh, is number one, if you're maybe on the side where you're going to complain about somebody, just don't fly off the handle and claim copyright infringement without having a better assessment of whether that's really the case. And two, if you're looking to create your own work and maybe be inspired by somebody else, and I'm using full finger quotes here, um, don't think that just making a few adjustments and changes, or even a lot, arguably a lot of individual changes, is going to uh, put you in some kind of safe harbor from a claim of copyright infringement. Make sure you are well educated on the subject, or maybe even better yet, <laughs> talk to a lawyer about it uh, to get a, a real good assessment of whether you're in the right if you're claiming copyright infringement, or if you're in the right, if you're on the receiving end of a claim for copyright infringement. But don't necessarily trust your gut on this one because um, it can be a much more complicated answer, although your gut can be very informing. So at any rate, 
If you have any questions about this video, drop a comment, shoot me a note. Uh, and if somebody would benefit from the contents of this video, please, please feel free to share it. Until the next time, uh, have a good one. Bye-bye.